Your relationship with Jesus is worth dying for. Let me tell you what is not worth dying for. Fame. Money. Positions. Titles. Competitive achievements. They are not worth dying for. You will hurt yourself and pierce yourself with many sorrows and not even live to see yourself step into it. There are some people today who will not sleep. Why? Because you saw a wrapper that someone wore. Please, after Koinonia, go and sleep. I release that grace upon you. Are we together? There are people today who will not sleep because they checked their social media, whatever, and saw two likes, two follows, two shares, and they said, no, this can, I, I mean, it can't be. <clears throat> go and sleep, please. This person was my junior in school and is now dedicating his house. No, please go and sleep. It's only when you are awake that you can go forward. Dead men don't go forward. There is no progress to dead people. Are we together? Yeah. There are things that are not worth losing sleep about. Please, I give you a sound counsel. A lesson from an overcomer. Learn to be contented while you aspire for great things. At every level, contentment is not mediocrity is gratitude celebrate seasons don't hurry out of them you will miss the season you are rushing out of now rushing out of now hallelujah with all humility there are things i cannot do again by reason of this supposed public or celebrity life sometimes i look back and i wish i had moments where i could smuggle myself maybe to just walk around literally can you imagine someone if someone sees you on the street even if you are just walking the person will kneel down there and say finally i know god i will not let you go they can literally hold your trouser in a junction and you know nigerians are people of faith they don't care if they tear the trouser and get their blessing to them is a good baguette <laughs> hallelujah I'm generally not the kind of person who likes all this, um, oh, you are this, and I, I usually don't like it. But sometimes you get to a point where you can't hide again, you can't do anything. And most people get beguiled by those things. When you see great people, you usually admire, you inspire, and then for many people, that, that inspiration from them now becomes cancerous because you lose sleep. I can't believe this. Is it not this guy that I even got filled with the Holy Ghost? He's the one who now has a membership of 1,000 people. And I am here with three people, four people. Please, dear man of God, do not leave sleep. The one person you are training is equivalent to a nation. A competitive spirit is cancerous. Literally, medically cancerous. It will destroy you. Anything that will not give me sleep, may God not bring it around my life. Are we together? Yes. Be content with the car you have now while trusting God for a greater one. A greater one will come, but drive the one you have with pride and don't let nobody bully you. Be content with the house you have now. Don't worry. Be content with the one cloth, the one shirt you have now. Man of God, be content with the 50 faithful members that God has given you. Serve them with all your heart. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. 
Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.